is Nixon. If you've been keeping up with The Sims 4, then you know that it has currently partnered up with Curse Forge. And I want to talk about that because I know a lot of us are very excited and there are some of us that are extremely concerned about what this could mean for our mods and CC in the future, especially as it comes to EA and how a lot of people feel that they are very um, money hungry. So uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get started to talk about that. Uh, unfortunately for our console players, mods will not be available for console still. Um, and we can talk about more about why that may be in the future. But for now, we're going to be talking about uh, Curse Forge and Sims for people that are playing on PC, well, on desktop and laptop. Let's quickly just go over what the heck is Curse Forge in the first place. And if you look it up on Google, it'll tell you this. So basically, this is saying that Curse Forge is an app or a site where mods and add ons for games are curated by the staff for Curse Forge. They just make sure that the mods are safe and um, quality mods. And it's pretty much it. It's just a place to download a bunch of mods for games in all in one space. Yeah. And these are just the top, some of the top games that they have for this. And we'll go over more of what The Sims, uh, what Curse Forge does, especially as related to what they say they'll do for The Sims 4. All right, but we'll start with why I think EA has decided to partner up with Curse Forge. Um, they may have had this plans in the work for a while. I don't know, but here is the reason why I think that they have decided to partner up with Curse Forge. So as you may have noticed, The Sims has been really emphasizing Hey, this would be a safe and secure place for you to, to get a uh, mods and CC for the Sims and blah, 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 blah. They have really been harping on that, uh, that it's just, that it'll be safe. And if you remember earlier this year, uh, there was an incident where some ADCC creators were supposedly putting trackers on their CC, to see if patrons uploaded their content somewhere else. Now, this was a huge invasion of privacy. They were sharing people emails and names and this, that, and other, and blocking them from downloading their CC. According to this Reddit post here, and I will leave this all for you to uh, look at on your own time. I'll leave this down in the description so you can know what the issue was and how it you know, may have relate to EA's decision. But yeah, it caused a lot of issues in the Sims 4 community, and a lot of people were like, hey, um, what are you going to do about this EA? You know, they're doing this with, you know, stuff pertaining to you. And they're like, I ain't tell you how to download that. That's not what they said though. But basically they was like, uh, we'll figure something out in the background, but they didn't really give a response to that. So eventually the Sims 4 up updated their terms of use and, um, basically included this ambiguous policy now that they had where, People were, were confused as to whether or not they can continue to create CC or if CC will be allowed to have early access. And of course, a lot of CC creators that have early access were like, hey, um, if you don't have early access, I'm not going to create CC anymore because I need to recuperate some money back for all that time I spent trying to either fix your game as a mod creator or, you know, just making CC to make your game more interesting. <laughs> so I, I get why a lot of CC creators and modders were like, hey, um, you know, if you get rid of early access, then I'm not creating for, for the, the Sims anymore, which, you know, is understandable. And a lot of people would not play the Sims anymore without mods or CC because the game is honestly quite boring without those things. I'm sorry, uh, may, everybody may not agree with that, but I feel like most of us do take breaks from the game because it is not as interesting and it is super buggy. So, uh, you know, EA would be out of luck and a lot of people would not play their game if, you know, CC and mods just didn't exist. Um, that's just what it is for the sims and because of that i feel like the ea had to find a solution to make it where but downloading cc and mods was safe so that way their community can feel safe you know downloading their, these things to help keep their game alive because that's basically what cc and mod does it keeps their game alive and i know there's a lot of console players who play without cc or mods because they have no choice but at the same time most of that community is upset because they don't get the choice to have that which is understandable but yeah, I'm pretty sure a major reason why they decided to move to Curse Forge was just that the community wasn't feeling safe um, downloading from all these different sites. And I'm sure that there are many other factors that probably went into it, but I really do feel like this was a really big one. Next, let's talk about why we should be excited about the team up with Curse Forge. Because we re there's, if they do all the things that they're saying that they're going to do, then there's every reason to be excited about it. 
So let's go ahead over to the official hub for Curse Forge and The Sims 4. This is the official page here. Um, it got a little thing that said you to go down for simmers. And if you're a modder and uh, the CC Creation Festival, which we can go over a little bit, I'm not really gonna talk about that too much, but we'll go over a little bit about that. But anyway, so, you know, it give you information here and then you scroll down and see how many days is left until it is um, available. This is how many days was left at the time I recorded. This is a little video explaining more about uh, this partnership that they have going. You know, they're introducing themselves and all that stuff, too, because uh, there was a poll that was like a lot of Sims were not very familiar with Curse Forge. But if you have Minecraft, then you probably have seen Curse Forge before. Um, like if you play Mighty Minecraft or a lot of these other games, then maybe you have. Maybe you're familiar with Curse Forge. Maybe you're not. But yeah, not the point. So we're going to go to this first Sims section. So basically, as I said earlier, Forge is moderated, so they do kind of vet the CC and mods and things that they have on their site. Um, so they, it should be quality stuff. It should be nice things that you can add to your game if you decide to do that. Um, like I said, it's managed and moderated, so there should be no malware, no viruses, no trackers, as those CC creators were accused of doing early discovery so if you're a similar you can find a lot of different cc uh there are a lot of cc that you know is floating around that we have no idea about because there's just so much sims 4 cc and it's all over the internet and there are a lot of things that you know we just haven't come across that we probably would like for our game so maybe having all this in one place would allow us to be able to you know find all these things that we may like and if it's anything like how it is set up for minecraft so like, let's say if you want to find something from Minecraft, let's say I wanted to find a mod related to villagers. I type in villager, ooh, if I can spell, I type in villagers and I hit enter and then all the mods related to villagers will pop up. So let's say you want to find something for shirts or male shirts. Um, hopefully you can add like a little hashtag or something in there and all the things related to that will pop up. Or if you want to find furniture like beds, you know, you can, you know, type in beds and then a bunch of beds will pop up. So that'd be really cool to be able to find things very easily from a whole bunch of different creators. This would be really good for a lot of small CC creators because, you know, a lot of, they'll get a lot more exposure. And if they weren't making money before, they'll be able to make a little bit of cash while doing this. And we can go over to more about with the modders part. It's the benefits for modders in the, the modder section. Um, But they also are saying that they will have a mod manager. Now, if you, you might've dealt with a mod manager if you use that mod from uh, Mod The Sims. I tried it out a little bit, it was okay. You know, hopefully this will be a lot better as there's a team working on it. But they'll promise that you'll be able to have thumbnails so you can see what the CC is. You'll be able to update it, delete it, and then enable to save it, disable it. So I know here they were saying they're promising it that it'll be able to auto update with uh, patches and in game updates. And then like as you're going through your CC, you'll be able to delete stuff. So hopefully that means that reduce a lot of people having duplicates because I know a lot of us tend to just be downloading a bunch of CC. Don't realize that we have duplicates of them. Also, hopefully it'll prevent us from having like a lot of CC that's very similar because we tend to download a lot of, like we like a certain type of hairs and stuff. And we might have a bunch of different hairs that pretty much look the same. Cause we've, I've seen a lot of hairs that look the same that came from different creators. And I was like, dang, I have like three of this same type of hair. So hopefully it'll reduce things like that. Um, Again, they're talking about safe and Simsy. And we'll go over this because this one, I don't feel like it's really a benefit to most of us. Most of us are adults. This does not really pertain to us. I know there are a lot of children that play the game, but I feel like most of us are like, yeah, no, we, I, I want to be able to play the game the way I want to. But this really limits as to what kind of stuff is uh, that will be available in the Forge library for the Sims. But yeah, that's pretty much it. It's just saying like, hey, we're going to auto update this that and the other so this is the good thing for simmers and now as far as modders the one i really want to say is again getting discovered it should make it much easier for get, to get discovered if you are a smaller creator if you are a smaller creator before and you were not getting very much money then this should at least get you a little bit of money um i have looked into the rewards program for curse forge uh, basically they allow you to get paid through the gift cards or through paypal um i think paypal was an option for that i remember seeing that there uh, the only issue is I don't really know exactly how they decide how much you get paid. So if you go to Curse Forge uh, website, they'll tell you, hey, you get paid through 70% of ad revenue goes to the mod creator. So they just have these little ads on the side and then people can subscribe to get rid of ads. And then the most of the money will go to, again, 
the creators of the mods and stuff. So that'll be really good for them, but I don't know if it's based off of downloads or what it is. I don't know how to decide how much a creator should get paid. Um, it's probably, again, if you are a bigger creator, it probably will not uh, help you at all because you probably work getting a lot more, a much more money through uh, early access or whatever other means you may have been using the Sims resource or whatever it is that you were using to help generate money for your uh, CC. Um, they also say like, you can make history. Not really important, but if you care about being one of the first people to join the mod hub, great, awesome. Um, if you care about meeting other creators, I feel like most, at least most of the bigger CC creators already kind of talk to each other and everything. So I feel like that's not much of a benefit for them. But if you're a smaller creator, it'd be nice to be able to be in that group to kind of learn more things. I have tried to make CC before. It is very difficult. You kind of do need some guidance. Um, it would be nice to be able to do that. So for smaller creators, that'd be great. This is pretty much related to that. It's like events to kind of have all the creators come together and brainstorm things and all that kind of stuff. And then this is the CC Creation Festival. And that's just uh, allowing people to kind of have a chance to win some money. Of course, you won't have a grand prize of $100,000. That, that, ain't, that ain't what they promised to hit. It's like there'll be prizes up to $100,000 distributed to people that join this little festival. So I don't know how to decide who they, how they're going to divide up that money. But you know, maybe you have a chance to get some if you go ahead and make some CC. They're going to be starting this by November 14th. So make sure you have your CC together before then and hopefully be able to do that. So you can just go to the official page to learn more about that if you are interested in joining this CC Creation Festival. I think that's pretty much it as far as all the really good things that you can get from it. Like you get to have safe and quality content as far as what they're saying. It should be safe though. Like I've, I've never had issue with Curse Forge. It should definitely be safe. Quality, I can't promise. <laughs> uh, easy discovery, so that's good. So you can search up anything. And then, like I said, the mod manager, we'll see how that works out because that could be really good or they might not implement it well. We'll see how that works out. Um, this one, again, we're going to talk about this. And then it'd be nice if our game, if our mods auto update, especially since, you know, a lot of things tend to break when the game updates or we can at least disable it until it updates. That'd be good, too. Somebody was saying like it, it will auto disable. I highly doubt that, but maybe it will. But I'm pretty sure if it auto disable, it auto disables everything. Like, you know, how the Sims make you go back in to click, tick the little boxes to get mods and stuff to work when the game updates. But who knows? We'll see how that works in the future. So I know that, you know, all this stuff sounds great, but there are a lot of concerns that people have with this Curse Forge stuff. And there's quite a, there's a couple that I have myself. But, but we are pretty much going to leave it here for now because this is getting lengthy and I'll go over the concerns in the next video. I just want to leave you with something right quick. This is the current calendar they have as far as how they plan on rolling out their partnership with Curse Forge. So as you can see, I will link all this in the description so you can have a quick look at it. But the only thing is for Mac users, look here they say that they will, that the Maha will be you know, available for everyone or the reveal will be available for everyone on the 14th, except uh, if you are a Mac player down here, they say, yeah, um, unfortunately, it will not be available until early 2023 because, you know, The Sims 4 and, uh, and Mac and mods just don't always work well together sometimes. They, they need a little bit more planning to work with. So, yeah, but that's pretty much it as far as uh, the good things that I want to talk about that may happen with this mod manager. But let me know, what are you all excited about that may happen? What are you concerned about? What are some things that, you know, what are some things that you want to know more about as far as what they're doing with this? Just let me know in the comments. Uh, let, like this video if you like this style of content so I can know to make more. And then subscribe to the channel so you can support the channel. Anyway, thank you all. I hope you all take care of yourselves. Until next time. Bye.